Welcome back. It's Nick here from exam.net. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can monitor and support your students during the exam. I won't focus too much here on how to best conduct remote exams. I'll have a separate video for that. OK, so follow me as I conduct an exam with my students. First, I find my exam here in my exam list and I click here next to the exam to take me to the monitoring view. OK, there are a lot of different things on this screen and by the end of this video you'll know what they all do. But let me start by giving you a general overview. This is how this screen looks during an active exam. On the left is the list of your students currently taking this exam. At the top here you have useful information about the exam and various functions and settings you can use. Underneath you have further functions for use after the exam is complete, such as exporting the students' answers. OK, so the first thing I usually do in this window is to get the exam started. If I click this button, then I can start my exam in two ways. If I select Open here, then the students can enter the exam key and start straight away. If I want all my students to start at the same time, I select Discoverable. I'm going to select that for this exam. So I've just shared the exam key with my students. They should start entering the exam now. Good. As they enter the exam, their names will appear on the list on the left. Since I clicked Discoverable for this exam, each student is currently in a lobby until I choose to open it. OK, so all my students are here and ready, so let's open the exam. OK, so now let's look more closely at the student list on the left. As well as the student names, this list includes lots of other useful information, so at a glance I can see what's going on with each student. Beside each name, various icons are shown depending on the exam settings and the status of that particular student's exam. The padlock indicates that the student is taking the exam in the high security mode. No icon at all indicates that the student is taking the exam in the lower security mode. This green icon indicates a test student that you created when you were previewing the exam. A flag indicates that you, for some reason, have flagged this student. For example, it could mean that you want to keep an extra eye on the student during monitoring. You flag a student by clicking on the name and then on this button. And a green tick indicates that the student has submitted their exam. Once you get to know these icons, you can scan your student list and quickly see what's going on with each student. To remind you what each icon represents, just hover over an icon and it will tell you what it means. Now there are two particular icons that I always keep an eye out for. The first is this exclamation mark. This means that this student's exam window lost focus, probably because they left the exam window. This student is now waiting for me to let them back into their exam. When this happens, I click on the student and I can then read the ex student's explanation as to what happened and then click the red button to let the student back into the exam. This will only happen if the security setting you chose for this exam requires your approval in this situation. I'll go over all the security settings in a separate video. Another icon I look out for is this Thunderbolt icon. It indicates that the student has a network connection problem. Remember that if a student's network connection fails during an exam, the student can just keep on working uninterrupted, so for the moment you don't need to worry about it. But if the Thunderbolt is still there when it's time to submit the exam, they will need to make an offline submission. We offer several ways to hand in exams offline, and I'll go through this in more detail in the troubleshooting video. Next I want to show you one of the features I really like and it's a favourite with my students. It's the chat function which you open by clicking here. This is essential for remote exams but I find it just as useful for exams in the classroom as well. The chat allows communication between me and a student without disturbing the rest of the class and it makes my life a lot easier because I can remain in my place with a good view of all the students. In fact, one thing I noticed with that chat function was that students who are not often comfortable raising their hand in a classroom situation suddenly feel that they can ask a question. So the chat function can help reduce certain students' stress levels in the exam situation. I can also communicate with the whole class through the chat as well. For example, if I want to let them know how many minutes are left, or if a student found an error in one of my questions and I need to let everybody know. Yes, we know it can happen. The chat only works when you're in this monitoring view and you can only communicate with students actively taking the test. The messages are only for real-time communication, they are not saved. 
I always keep this window open while students are taking an exam. If for some reason I need to do something else in exam.net, I'll open a new window or tab so I can keep this one active. As a matter of habit, I always click on this bell icon when I'm monitoring exam as well. This turns on notifications for actions that occur during an exam, so I'll know, for instance, if a student has sent a chat message or submits their exam. If this doesn't work, it may be that you have set a general block for notifications and so you'll need to go to your browser settings to enable notifications for the exam.net web page. As you know, we often have some students that need specific accommodations during an exam, and exam.net offers a number of tools that can be activated for an individual student in order to support and accommodate specific needs. I always get these set up just after the exam has got going, and if I forget, I can simply adjust the individual accommodations at any time during the exam. Here's a student that I need to think about. You see that under the Accommodations tab, you have a number of tools that can be activated for that student. I went over these tools in detail in the video on built-in tools, but I'll quickly point out two that I often use. The first is text-to-speech, which helps students with reading difficulties by reading text aloud. And the other is translation, which helps students who are not writing in their first language. Next tab over is the Student Answer and History tab. I can check in on certain students when I like during the exam to see how they're getting on, or if they've even started. What I'm seeing here is how many questions this particular student has answered. And a nice feature here is that I can click through my students one at a time and see how each one is doing. If you've anonymised an exam, you won't be able to see the student answers in this view, as this could give away the student's identity, of course. After an exam is finished, you can come back to this tab to view the history of how a student's test evolved. A full copy of each student's exam is saved automatically every fifth minute. There are situations when it is very valuable to be able to look back on how a text evolved. For example, as I mentioned in another video, I once had a student who managed to erase their text before submitting the exam, and with this feature I could still see what they'd written. Now let's take a look at the first tab, Status and Actions. If I click on a student name, I can see the information about the student, their IP address and their device, and on the right you can also see the exam log, which shows the student's activity. I can also submit the exam for this student only. So now we get to the lower section of the monitoring view where there are a number of buttons. These buttons at the very bottom are all to do with what you do after the exam is complete. And I'll talk more about these in the next video on marking and handling exam results. But there are also a couple of useful functions that you can use during the exam. First, you can set a timer for your students. The students will see the remaining time at the bottom of the exam menu. Please note that their exams will not be automatically submitted when the time is up. It's just so that the students can keep their eye on the clock. You can also end the exams for all or some of your students. I showed you what this looks like for the students in the student experience video. The next button that you need to know about is this one, individual keys to resume an exam. This can be a real lifesaver in certain situations. This is a unique key that can be given to a particular student if their exam needs to be resumed. For example, there could be an issue with a student needing to change their device in the middle of an exam. In this case, I just give the student the individual exam key, and when the student enters that on the new device, they can pick up right where they left off. Although this doesn't happen often, it's good to know about. What's more common for me, though, is to use the individual exam keys to conduct an exam or an assignment over multiple sessions. To do this, the student just submits the exam at the end of the first session, as they would normally, and at the start of the next session, I can provide an individual exam key automatically to each student via email. I can show you how this is done in more detail in the video on Power User Tips. OK, that might have felt a bit like information overload. There are so many fantastic things that exam.net can do to tell you about. But once you've tried running an exam a few times, you'll see that the whole classroom exam experience is made much simpler by being able to have complete control at all times.